Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, grandmothers and grandfathers, dogs and cats, whoever is watching, <laughs> thank you. Today we're joined by the scrapper from Fallowfield, England, Manchester. He's the Englishman that can wrestle, that can finish, and could soon be a millionaire. How's it going in the beautiful state of California? Brendan Lochnane, did I get your last name right on the first try? That might be the best introduction I've ever had, so yeah, that's me. Yes. Awesome. Great. Is California treating you well? I noticed you're out there with the lions. Beautiful, huh? Oh, shit. Okay, now to kick things off, uh, you said in the past that you were expecting to maybe face off with Bubba Jenkins in the championship bout of the tournament. Does this prediction change as his new opponent uh, for his next bout is Bobby Moffat? And how do you see that fight going? I think he's had a, a touch, really. I mean, he's a last minute replacement. Don't know too much about the guy, but he looks like he's on a losing streak. Um, whereas I've got a much tougher draw. Uh, so, I mean, this should be a walk in the park for Bubba. Let's see, though. Uh, anything can change. Tournament format. Um, so, yeah, let's see. But I think I've, I've, you know, him and Lance seem to have easier fights than me. Um, so we'll see how it goes. Yeah, well said, well said. I agree. You, they really threw you through the Sharks with uh, Shaman Marias as your first fight. I mean, that was that was a banger, though. Mm -hmm. um, now, what did you think of your opponent, Tyler Diamond's first performance on uh, the same card as you? Because he was the only one that uh, got close to a finish. Besides, you know, yourself, of course, you actually achieved the finish. But he, he was the only person that got close. Did you think the referee should have stopped the fight? And what did you make of his own performance? He also nearly got finished himself, though. Like yeah, dropped in the same round. He he was severely hurt in that fight. Like is it shows how tough Tyler Diamond is really to get through that. Um, because he was hurt really bad. That Korean guy was good. Uh, but you know he he prevailed. He come through and he got the win. It shows us how tough he really is. Um, but that fight wasn't long ago. He's carrying damage. I don't care who you are. You can't recover from them kind of shots. Them kind of kicks in this short turnaround and then to be able to have a successful camp in between that it's going to be really difficult for Tyler so we'll see how he comes out on fight night yeah he's got his work cut out for him I just think it's the mullet man it gives you magical powers but um you're way past the competition in the featherweight rankings you've got six points everybody else best case is three so with that in mind uh even though if you get a win decision or not you're still guaranteed a spot in the playoffs does this maybe entice you to play it a bit safer and, you know, take it to the cards to a decision and secure that W, no question? Or would you maybe really throw it all out there and go for a higher point differential with a finish? I guess I'll just find out on the night. I don't know. We'll, we'll see how it goes. I mean, the interesting thing about our fight is because we're so late on the card, we're both going to know exactly where we stand before the fight. So... With Tyler having three points, he may need six, he may need five, he may need four to go through. So uh, it's going to make for a very interesting fight while we watch the fights backstage before ours. Yeah, I didn't even factor that into the equation, dude. That's a big, that's a big deal. That's awesome, though, that you guys get to watch everything and get that. That's pretty kick-ass. So now to really segue into something completely unrelated, I saw on your Instagram post, that you bet on yourself for the uh, Shaman Marias fight. You took home a nice extra chunk of change on top of the one purse, which I'm sure was wonderful. Was that your first time betting yourself on yourself or has that been sort of a tradition as of late? I'm going to be completely honest. That wasn't my bet. That wasn't my bet. Yeah, that Who was a friend. Believe in yourself was the caption, Brendan. Yeah, because there was two pictures and the first one was me at the top. Oh, yeah. Me at the <laughs> top of the uh, Dude, I was celebrating like we both won when I saw that. I was like, you took home an extra 18 racks. Are you kidding me? That's money, dude. No, and it no, was no. pounds as well. So a friend of mine um, obviously believes in me more than I believe in myself. And he's like, yeah, he's like, yeah, you're going to win. And he was all drunk at a party. He's a millionaire anyway, so it didn't really matter. But he was all drunk and then just was put it on and then sent me the betting slip after. And was like, thanks, bro. And I was just laughing. <laughs> yeah, dude, he wipes his ass with 18K if he's a millionaire. But I mean, look, the money is look, money. There was a few bets that I didn't post. Like there was a good five or six different big bets from guys in the UK. So 
Yeah, man. Next time I'll be posting them all, so you keep your eyes on it. Yeah, and post mine because I fucking missed out. I was going to hammer the Brendan Lachman money line and just the odds. They made you a heavy favorite on my book. I saw somewhere they're making you underdogs. Wish I had that, man. Ah, uh, okay. I won 20 bucks, so I'll take it. I appreciate it. Nice. <laughs> now, you started training MMA as a footballer with no prior combat sports experience, right? No base, no, no judoka, none of that. Now, this is very common now to just, you know, hop into a transition from one sport to another. But back mm-hmm. then... That was very uncommon. You know, if you're going to MMA, you, you tend to have a background in something. You know, you got Dan Severn, former collegiate wrestler, Randy Couture, all those guys. So nowadays, people join an MMA gym. They've got, you know, moves to teach for the month, beginner and intermediate classes, all that good shit. And they never had that when you started. You really single-handedly watched the sport evolve. Now, if you think, my question is, if you think you trained the way you do now back then, that that could have maybe altered how your career went, maybe a couple more finishes, one less robbery loss? Um, I mean, I'm glad I started in just pure MMA. Uh, it was the best thing ever for me to start in pure MMA because I feel like guys that come from collegiate wrestling, they come from boxing, they, they pick up bad habits when it comes to MMA. So boxers will be more flat-footed. Wrestlers will more depend on the takedown. Um, whereas I just got comfortable with all aspects of martial arts off the bat. Like I was just MMA. I had no other background apart from soccer. So hence the leg kicks. Um, so yeah. yeah. And I mean, yeah, I was glad that I was the start of the new breed. I was right at the beginning of the new breed. Yeah, I was going to mention that you're a part of like this first generation of the literal first people that were introduced from MMA through all aspects. It's very unique. Mm-hmm. You know, it's normal now, but. That's, that's something that's really shown in your fights. I mean, you've got sprawl and brawl, everything, man. Now, you've only got three losses on your career. You've got the Mike Wilkinson loss, which you avenged at ACB 54. Um, and you arguably won the two others. You know, it, I, I thought that he, I don't know what the judges were smoking on the Pat Healy fight. That was pretty obvious in my opinion, but that's just my two cents. My question is not if you think you're an undefeated MMA fighter, you know, John O'Malley and that mentally undefeated BS. But my question is, do you ever think you've lost a fight? Have you ever walked away from a bout and think, man, I don't think I earned that dub or something like that? Yeah, I lost to Norman Park on the Ultimate Fighter. Um, that's not on my record, but Norman Park beat me, fair and square. He was a 55er. Um, I was going up in weight, but no excuses. Norman's a great fighter with a great record, so I was very... I was very sorry about that. Hey, hey! Hey, come here! <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, I was very yeah, inexperienced like... in that fight. Yeah. Uh, I was only five and zero, oh, and I'm sure he was like twenty three and two. So he was uh, eight and zero, oh, I believe. I watched it last night. He had some he thoughts on eight. you. He was fairly, he was fairly green as well. I noticed that he wasn't too. Nah, green. he definitely I'll wasn't. I'll watch it back. I'll watch it back. I don't know. I saw it last night though. Hundred percent, he wasn't eight and zero. Oh. I remember seeing at least he was at least in double figures by far though, like twenties. 15 to 20 watch well i rewatched it and uh yeah norman park if you're watching your hair is better than mine but all right since we're already on the topic of your career you've been fighting for almost over half your life which is just commendable to say the least i mean started when you were 16 31 now it's safe to say you're a veteran of the fight game but not only that you have the same enthusiasm since you started at age 16 Mm -hmm. now since mma has recently gone mainstream a lot of people, you know, 16-year-olds, like when you first started or trying to transition into the sport, maybe they play a different sport or not. And they have really high aspirations coming in. They're a bit pig-headed about it. Like, oh, I'm going to be UFC champion. with uh, I'm only got a month of experience, but I already want to get a fight. And vice versa, there are people who are too committed and they get themselves injured or punch drunk before they can have a proper career. So to this new generation of fighters that are half committed or fully committed, do you have any advice for them on what it takes to be a professional mixed martial artist? Like just a mindset, a simple motto, like just have fun, like anything like along those lines. Well, yeah, that's a that's a really good question. Come here, that's actually a really really good question. Uh, I think you have to be extremely passionate. You have to be patient. You have to wait for your turn. You have to wait for your opportunity. You have to be motivated, and you have to be willing to go through shit times. Heavy discipline. You have to be willing to miss your friend's birthday your friend getting married, you have to be willing to be a bit lonely. Um, and it takes a special kind of mind, especially me now, 13 years into a career. It's like, 
and to still keep the same enthusiasm, it is kind of crazy, to be honest. Um, but I am. I'm still hungry as fuck. I'm still hungry. I've done it for free for about seven years, eight years, until I finally started making some actual money. So yeah, it, it's just been a passion of mine. And this year, they will call it paid in full. Damn straight they will. That's what I like to hear. I mean, you said it perfectly. Eat, sleep, breathe, and shit MMA, really. I mean, that's the only way you can look at it. That kind of made me sad. But, like, you you obviously love it. And, you know, so many fighters out there, they keep that same passion. It's just – it takes a special kind of mind, special kind of person to really stay in there and enjoy it. But it's it's really just I, – I see the perspective. Now, in your Fight Disciples interview, you said you had a few goals when you started MMA, three of the big ones being – Headline at Manchester Arena, which you did at ACB 54. Fight in the UFC, which you did against the robbery that was Mike Wilkinson. You know, he robbed the bank. And live off of prize fighting money, which I, it's safe to say I think you're doing right now and probably before in the past. So you've achieved all these things. Uh, and not to mention, you you even sorted out some of your parents' bills. I'm not, if I'm not mistaken, you paid off maybe a more. I didn't know the exact bill, but I mean, that that is every kid's dream. And that is I envy that so much. And you know, it's not really as common nowadays with my generation, but, you know, we all should be doing that. And that's just something that should get a bit more attention. Now, you did all that. So you did all that shit. You did all your goals. You succeeded. You paid off your parents. You did all those things. Now, would it be safe to say now that you're fighting for legacy or what What keeps your never ending fire burning? As we mentioned I'm you previous. I'm still not a world champion. I'm still not a millionaire. I mean, there's still light at the end of the tunnel. Why would I train all of years and get as good as I've got to stop now? Like, I've just got to keep showing the world how good I actually am. We could be staring. If a couple of decisions would have went my way, like I say, we could be looking at 23 and 0. And then we'd be, oh, having, yeah. a whole, we'd be having a whole different conversation, me and you now. I'd be on the front page of, of ESPN magazine. I'd be on the oh, UFC. Yeah. If, if, we if, wouldn't if, have shit on you, dude. You're Brendan Lachnane, undefeated striker. Come on. If it, few things would have went my way, but they didn't. And I'm not mad about it. I'm still here. I'm still plugging away. I'm still still doing my thing. So there's still so many years left in me. I've got no damage. I've never been knocked out. I've never been submitted. I mean, not to jinx it for this fight, but fucking hell, I'm fresh. I'm ready. Yeah. No, you look well, good, man. You're in peak performance, as they say. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. Such crisp combos. It's nice to watch. But now... It's no secret you represent Manchester the absolute fullest and you wanted to put it on the map in the martial arts world. Now, considering your MMA accolades and where you are right now, do you feel you've achieved that goal and, or, you know, you played your part in establishing Manchester as a reputable place for elite fighters to train and fight out of? Yeah, I was the first person from Manchester to ever fight in the UFC. Um, and I'm going to be the first ever Mancunian MMA world champion. Uh, that's that's the next goal. Um like I say, I did tick off the Manchester Arena. I did tick off Vegas. Uh, there was a few locked in there, but now about to set new ones, fresh ones, world champion. And then how good will, how many, I don't know how many zeros a million is, but how good will that look on your bank? You know what yeah. I mean? So, yeah, it's not going to look too bad. So, I mean, there's still goals. There's still places to go. And I feel like the world hasn't got to see the best of me yet, which is crazy. No, we haven't. I see it a lot in the YouTube comment sections. Everyone's like, man, Brendan always gets screwed over. He's always looking good and ready to fight. And then, you know, something happens, just pure dumb luck. It's, you know, people get screwed over sometimes in this sport and it's just unavoidable. But now on another note, you've trained at countless MMA gyms throughout your career. You spent time, I mean, you're at Alliance MMA or you were, and you, you've trained at Tiger Muay Thai. You've got Champs Camp back in the motherland of Manchester. And you even spent some months in Dubai. Despite all of that, is there any gym out there that you feel like you've always wanted to visit and get a session in that you haven't been able to? Oh, good question. Uh, not off the top of my head, my head. No, I can't really think of another one. Have you been to Team Alpha Male? Uh, no. Yeah, he's outside. Oh. I've not been to like Alpha Male. I'm going to be fighting an Alpha Male guy, and I also fought one previously. So, Oh, yeah, I forgot. We gotta make it two and zero against Alpha Male. I might even fight three when I fight Lance. So easy money. Let's get it. Come on. I'm gonna punch my drywall or some shit. All right. This is the last question. It's a bit disgusting. I'm not gonna lie. It will probably satisfy any dominatrixes that watch this okay. interview. If you don't know what that is, don't look it up. Like me, for the love of God. But anyways, you've ended up peeing blood after two of your fights. Now that is by far my biggest fear. Probably any man, any sane man's fear. Do you know what strike causes that to happen? And 
how exactly do you go about getting that checked out? Do you just go up to the doctor and say, I ruptured my balls? Or how do you, how do you phrase that? No, nah, it's body kicks. Uh, I got body kicked in the body by Tom Duquemois, piss blood. And then I, and the contender, I got some real nasty teeps to the gut. And then I pissed blood again, but it's only happened twice. And there's not much you can really do about it apart from go out and party it off. That's about it. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind next time I piss blood. I'll just make yeah, sure to right. get a six pack and chill with the boys. Huh? I, you know, that's it. Thank you for enlightening me about all my curiosities and weird fixations, however you want to phrase it. The peeing blood was important, people. I had to know. Okay. That about wraps it up for this interview. But, uh, Brendan, you got any, any departing remarks? Anything to say to the fans? No, nah, look, tune in, uh, June 10th, same again, same Brendan Lotney, another great camp, feeling fast, strong, ferocious, the UK Animal, Manchester. ready to back. go, just feed let's him the go. division, let's go, let's go. come. Keep right, getting high. up, chair. keep, all right, keep that all right, see you guys, up. appreciate it, see you on the <laughs> other side, flippity flop, I don't fucking know. At least I'm recording this bullshit.